Hey, Max, it looks like Ben Bywater is going to step in for, for Keenan there on the depth chart. Uh, what can you tell us about him? What does he bring? What are some of his strengths that uh, BYU fans can expect to see Saturday? No, uh, I mean, first off, it's uh, you know, sad that there's Keenan. Um, we love that guy. He's one of our best contributors. And, you know, but we feel confident um, with the guys stepping up. We got some good linebackers, Ben, especially. Um, he works hard. Um, he's worked hard a lot this offseason. He's gotten a lot bigger, um, a lot stronger. So, I mean, there's really not much drop off, to be honest. I think uh, we ha we should have it under control in the linebacker room. Um, obviously, like I said, you know, it's going to we're going to miss Keenan out there. He's one of the best contributors on our team and one of our you know leaders on defense. But, um, you know, Keenan trusts in us. We we trust in the process and, uh, you know, we're just going to try to, you know, fill in the spots and fill in the holes as much as we can. And then what do you recall from that game two years ago at South Florida? How much did you play? And uh, if I remember right, they ran the ball pretty effectively on you guys. Do you think you can shut it down this time? Yeah, that was uh, one of the games my Richard freshman year where I, I didn't take too many reps. I, I played a couple, a couple of reps. Um, I didn't play much, but um, I mean, it was a frustrating game. They ran the ball down us, down our throats. Um, we, uh, you know, we got that in our memories. A lot of the guys that played in that game are still here. So, uh, I think we just don't want, we don't want to come out flat and have that happen again. So. Sean, you're up. Trying to find the unmute button, Max. Sorry about that. Yeah, all good. Uh, you, you think after two and a half years or however long this pandemic has been, I know Zoom by now, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I don't know it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, it, speaking of that a little bit, how how do you guys kind of avoid a little bit of a letdown um, after the last three weeks and the last two in particular of, of – everything, I mean, where the stadium has been at and back-to-back -back ranked opponents and everything that that is, has come with it. How do you kind of avoid sort of dropping off from that and still getting up for a South Florida game and a team that's probably going to be pretty hungry to win? Yeah, you know, uh, I mean, like like uh, was mentioned before, I mean, a couple of years ago, that was right, right after we beat USC, beat Tennessee. So, I mean, it's Really, in, in hindsight, you know, it's a similar situation going into the game. I think we've kind of just made us stress the whole season, you know, never, never, uh, you know, be confident, but not too confident in the fact that, you know, you think you're better than anyone. You can't, you can't go into a game thinking you're going to dominate. You got to, you know, play each game like, like it's going to be a good game, like it's going going to be a, a dog fight. And we know it will be, you know, South Florida, they're, they are a good team, you know, they've, they have some athletes. They can uh, spread the ball on you. So, and like like two years ago, they ran the ball really well. So, I think it's just a matter of you know trusting our uh, responsibilities and taking care of our one eleven. Okay, let's go, Mitch, and then Jared. Yeah, Max. Uh, a couple weeks ago, earlier this month, you missed the Arizona game. I just asked this because of Keenan's injury. Uh, how are you at? Where are you at health wise? Are you and I know that in the season, it's probably never going to be at 100%, but are, are you feeling good with everything that you've been dealing with? Yeah, to be honest, uh, I mean, coming into the game against Arizona State, I was feeling pretty close to 100. Um, so, I mean, my knee isn't a big uh, factor into, you know, me not performing or whatnot or playing as much. I feel like I'm healthy enough that I will be able to make an, in, uh, an impact. Um, but I mean, it, it is just one of those things you got to get used to. Um, and I'm sure it will nag throughout the season. Maybe I'll retweak it a little bit, but that's just football. You know, I've, I've all, I never really played in a game where I wasn't dinged up. So it's nothing new. Um, so, I mean, just, just ready for it, you know, ready for anything. And there's there's guys behind you that are always ready on a moment's notice. Guys like Drew Jensen as well, just maybe – uh, can you speak to just the, the 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 depth that's in that linebacker room right now that you guys are all available at a moment's notice? Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, me and Drew, we obviously came in, you know, around the same time, Peyton, obviously. Um, but we have a lot of guys that have been here and been in the system for a while and guys that are newer, you know, Josh, um, some other guys 
that we, we, we feel confident with whoever, whoever's willing to step in. Um, I mean, Drew, obviously the last couple of games, he's, he's came in when he needed to, and he made some big plays for us. So he's someone you can count on to be physical and give it, a, give it his all um, every play. So I think, I don't think anyone's concerned about, you know, our, our depth, that linebacker. I feel like all the guys are ready to come in and play on a moment's notice. Thanks, Max. Yep. Max, I wanted to talk about takeaways for a second. You guys have done a pretty good job through three games. I think you have, what, seven or eight as a team. But there's also a, a balance to strike there because occasionally you'll see guys ripping at the ball and then the running back will gain an extra five yards or, you know, you go for a pick and it'll turn into a big play for the other team. How do you find that balance as a defensive player? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, obviously there's there's times to know when to go for the ball, when to make a play on the ball, when to go for the strip. And, you know, sometimes it's not that time. If, if you're the first guy in, in the play on a tackle, if, if your guy catches it, you know, it's not always the best time to go for a strip. And I think, you know, after however many years of football for most of us on the team, I feel like we've all kind of, uh, you know, gotten used to that that aspect of football is, you know, you take care of your assignment first. And usually the second guy in the pile will will be the guy to put and punch it out. You know, it's just a it's a group effort. You know, that's why you got to trust all eleven guys on the field. Um, you know, to, to create those turnovers because it's not always going to be you. It's going to be the next guy in. So it seems like in college football the turnover prop has become a big deal whether it's a belt or a necklace or a throne or what does that do as a defender you know what does that mean if you get a pick or something like that and and you have some sort of a prop to to kind of to play with show off with you know uh, to be honest to, to be completely honest I've never really big of, been a big fan of like the turnover belts or anything but you know getting that recognition from the players and from the coaches um you know, that you made a big play is obviously something that's really cool. And I, you know, I, I, I appreciated that on Saturday. You know, it, it's a good feeling when you make a takeaway, um, when you complete a takeaway. So, I mean, me personally, I'm not as big, you know, I'm not enthusiastic. I, I'm not a big celebrator, maybe in the moment, but, you know, I, I could I could do without it. But, you know, some people love it for sure. 